Hey guys, so welcome to the first video of Basics of Vehicle Dynamics. This will be a short video just for me to get the hang of this and also get to get some feedback from you guys to see how complicated or how simple you want uh, me to explain concepts such as this. So let's get started. So basically load transfer is another word for weight transfer. Many people use them interchangeably. They aren't quite the same. But for this purpose, we will use them uh, interchangeably. The difference is weight transfer is the actual shifting of mass in the car, which changes the balance uh, between the four corners. Load transfer is the shift of load from the tires due to acceleration of the car. It's a subtle difference, but it's enough to distinguish between the two. However, for these purposes, we won't be, we won't be worried about the distinction too much. So, load transfer. Pretty much, it's... It's a shifting of the weight around the car as the vehicle brakes, accelerates, turns, what have you. Why does it happen? Simply it's because the center of gravity is above the ground. That's literally it. Any, any object with a center of gravity above the ground and is being accelerated will have some weight shift. So to start with, let me describe. So let's say we have just a wheel with a mass on top of it. So let's say this is balanced along the central axis and it has center of gravity here. So let's say that this is perfectly balanced as we said before. Let's say that there's a sudden force applied by the tire. Now the only way the tire can apply a force in this scenario is through the contact patch which of course is right here. So if you imagine there's a force pulling that way, if the car is going, or whatever you want to call this, is going that way. So in other words, it's decelerating, assuming it has some sort of initial velocity. What happens here, as you can clearly imagine, is it will do this. It will fall flat on its face. Well, th that's pretty easy, but that's simply because this force is acting at this distance from, uh, from the center of mass. This is called a torque, typically. So if you imagine like you're trying to turn a wrench or you're trying to undo a bolt, having a longer wrench is always going to be easier, simply because you have more leverage, because you have a wider, sorry, not a wider, a longer arc through which you can apply the force. So if we, if we apply this concept to a fully four-wheeled vehicle, just erase this. My drawing skills aren't quite what they used to be, but bear with me. Oh god, that's terrible. Much better. So if we, if we see a car like this, let's say it has center of gravity up here. And it's on some, some sort of level ground. And let's, let's use the same example as before. The car is moving with some initial velocity in this direction. And then you brake, so the tires are applying force in the opposite direction of movement. So what happens here is the car will still rotate. But since these are at an angle, and some complicated math, which I won't go into, the car will want to push down on this end and pull up on this end. So what this means is that, essentially, if we imagine that this one initially had a 50-50 weight distribution, so let's say it had 50 units of weight on the front and 50 units of weight on the back, now there's going to be a greater than 50 units on the front and less than 50 units on the back because weight, the load is being transferred to the front tire. And remember, the sum of the loads must always equal the same. So for example, if this one became 60, this one would have to become 40. If this one was 70, this would, be, would have to become 30, and so on. The sum, of the, the sum of the weight has to be, the, I'm sorry, the sum of the load has to be the same. So, and for those who need a refresher, a load is simply 
a force. And if, as you know, F is equal to MA. So in this case, the mass is the weight of the car or the weight over the front axles or in the rear axle respectively. And then the acceleration, which is the force of gravity. So it'd be mass times 9.81. And that'll just be the force. So now that we have that covered, we will start talking about why the car pitches in the first place. Now, if you imagine a go-kart or like a cart of any type, it doesn't have suspension. So is there still load transfer? Yes, of course. Because anything with the center of gravity above the ground will have load transfer. I just wanted to spell that myth right away that, that says the spring rate or how stiff the springs are on the car changes the amount of load transfer there is. I've, I've heard this a lot in setup guides and it seems to be a common misconception that the stiffer the springs are the more load you're transferring to whatever corner of the car you're accelerating from or to. I just want to make, make it clear that this does not change the amount of load transferred. Running a thousand pound spring and running a 500 pound spring won't change the amount of weight transferred when you're braking at 1G. The things that affect how much uh, load transfer there is are, one, the track width or the wheelbase of whatever car you're talking about. Next, the height of center of gravity. And then the last one is how much you're decelerating by, what the acceleration is. In other words, the wider your track width, the less the less load uh, transfer there will be, or the longer wheelbase. The lower the height of the center of gravity, and this is a very big one, because often you can't adjust either of these values when you're racing, say, GT cars or, or prototypes and open wheelers which have defined uh, dimensions of track width and wheelbase. So this one is a big one that race car designers look for, to lower the center of gravity as much as possible. Because a car with a center of gravity at ground level, and this is technically impossible, Unless somehow you have part of the ground, part of the car under the road, there wouldn't be any load transfer if the center of gravity was at at road level, where the force is being applied. So thank you for watching this short video. I cut it off right there. I do want to uh, elaborate a little bit more on exactly what causes the cars to pitch and roll, namely the springs and how they interact and how the stiffness of the springs interact with the weight of the car, etc. But I just wanted to wait and see what you guys thought of this and if I can get some more feedback on what you want to see and what you didn't like, what you like, that sort of thing. So thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I'll have the next video out soon, the full one at least.